We do everything throwing out the rules of existing lithium ion batteries. A battery that doesn't need any metal whatsoever is made up of around 99 recyclable materials. That is exactly what we mean when we discuss plastic batteries. So how will plastic batteries be the future of battery technology? And most importantly, how will it affect the environment if we're actively trying to get rid of plastic? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car Works. World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. Polyjewel, a startup company based near Boston, is trying to create a new kind of battery, somewhere on the performance curve between those old lead acid batteries and lithium ion cells. Their technology relies not on metal, but on polymer plastic. With approximately 12,000 charge cycles, this battery outperforms even the 4680 battery by six times. In contrast, a 4680 battery might manage only around 2,000 to 3,000 charge cycles in its lifetime. Polyjewel batteries can also discharge around one megawatt of power in 10 seconds, compared to the 60 seconds an average lithium ion battery needs. So what is the energy density of this battery? The Polyjewel battery cell that's under development development has an energy density five times smaller than the 4680 battery from Tesla, or about 60 watt hours per kilogram. Moreover, weight is directly tied to energy density. We know that Tesla's 4680 battery cell weight was clocked in at 355 grams. In contrast, the polyjewel cell weighs 71 grams, five times less than the 4680 battery. What does that mean for the cost of the polyjewel battery? At present, the polyjewel battery costs about 65 $5 per kilowatt hour. Many industry observers believe costs must get down to $20 per kilowatt hour or less for battery storage to really force a sea of change in how electricity is made and stored. But keep in mind that economies of scale are still ahead for the fledgling company. But although lithium ion batteries have reduced drastically in price in the last decade, they still have an average of around $132 per kilowatt hour. A polyjewel battery is also two times less expensive than a 4680 battery. The promise of this battery is phenomenal. $65 for one kilowatt hour means $325 for five kilowatt hours, which will fully power your home, including air conditioning, for one hour. So $3,250 for 10 hours of power, power backup, or $6,500 for 20 hours of energy storage, roughly a day, all for 30,000 cycles, which is 100 years or a lifetime of use. So, if it works as advertised, it'll be indeed a winner. Based on 10,000 trials, that makes a very good battery for the home that meets that criteria. Low cost, uh, safe, and long lifetime. But how exactly does this battery work? Polyjewel batteries use electrodes made of conductive polymers. Simply put, a conductive polymer is an organic-based compound that is not a metal, but can act like one. At the core of a conductive polymer chain, alternating carbon to carbon single and double bonds connect to form a conductive backbone that allows electrons to flow along the polymer chain. So then what's so unique about polyjewel? Conductive polymer-based technology uses a standard two-electrode electrochemical cell that contains conductive polymers. That's two electrode electrochemical cell, along with a carbon graphene hybrid and a non flammable liquid electrolyte. At the electrode level, positive ions and negative ions travel back and forth between the electrodes as the cell is charged and discharged. During charging, the ions are stored in the electrode bulk through a Faradaic process called oxidation. During discharging, the ions are expelled from the electrodes through a Faradaic process called reduction. Man, I sound like those videos that you would watch in science class. Now, who is collaborating with Polyjewel? First customer is an industrial distributed energy consumer. Late last year, the company installed the world's first industrial-scale organic battery on one of Fonterra's farms in Deirapa on the outskirts of Hamilton. The battery was used daily, supporting dairy shed operations for 10 months. Fonterra is now moving this battery to its Waitoa UHT site, which can be affected by power disturbances, leading to downtime and waste. The polyjewel battery has a remarkable discharge rate and could eventually lead to ultra 
ultra-fast charging of the Fonterra vehicle fleet, including the Milk E electric milk tanker. Polyjewel batteries could not only benefit Fonterra, as New Zealanders could also take advantage of the lowered wholesale electricity prices anticipated through the capacity increases provided by a grid-scale battery. But what about Elon? Will he join the plastic battery industry? And the original idea back before grid energy storage was even on the minds of, of Tesla. Tesla's success points to the consumer's interest in doing what's right for the environment. However, the materials needed for the batteries are another point of contention. There are accusations of the poor treatment of indigenous populations surrounding a lithium mine in Argentina. If this plastic technology is highly feasible, maybe Musk will participate in this project. The idea of using plastic batteries for Powerwall and power pack is quite an interesting one. Tesla has begun using lithium iron phosphate battery cells in its Megapack grid scale storage systems. Today's conventional lithium ion grid scale battery storage facilities can typically supply electricity to the grid for about four hours. Meanwhile, Polyjewel's plastic batteries might be able to store energy longer. In tests, it retained 92% of its capacity over a 20 hour span. If this turns out to be true, it'll be a huge step forward. Another important issue when inventing a new type of battery is how will they be recycled? Polyjewel batteries are completely environmentally friendly and easy to recycle. Polymers can be easily synthesized from basic chemicals and potentially renewable sources, which lowers the price and makes environmentally harmful mining unnecessary. Furthermore, the recycling or disposal at the end of the lifetime is more facile, as polymers can simply be incinerated with regular waste and do not need to be treated separately. Besides that, that, Elon Musk said that the 4680 structural battery pack found in the Texas-made Model Y can indeed be recycled. The company says, unlike fossil fuels which release harmful emissions into the atmosphere that are not recovered for reuse, Tesla's lithium-ion batteries are recoverable and recyclable. Battery materials are refined and put into a cell, and they will still remain in the cell at the end of their lives when they can be recycled to recover their valuable materials for reuse over and over over again. How do you feel about plastic batteries? Do you think that Elon will develop this type of battery in the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. We sincerely thank you for watching and for all of your support of our channel. And as always, if you enjoyed our video, please leave us a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs and green technology. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and until the next time we meet, take care and be safe.